is Wonderful Heaven Farm. My name is Priscilla Nyairia. On my previous video, we were talking about zero to three months, how the care you should take from zero to three months on your Wambogo apples. So today we are to talk about four, five, six months. It's like the second trimester of a baby. You know, babies have three trimesters the same way with the Wambogo apples. And at the third trimester, our baby is born. And the same way, Wambogo apple starts fruiting after nine months. So now, today, as we talk about the three, four, five, four, five, six months, the care you should take is that if you didn't plant using manure, like I was talking about the bottom-up method. If you have not watched that video, just go and watch it so that you can catch up with this one. If you didn't use manure while transplanting, this is the best stage for you to add manure. And while adding the manure, don't add it, don't make sure that your manure is not touching the stem of your plant. Stem, stem means somewhere here. Make sure your manure is not touching the stem of, the, of your plant because if it touches the stem of your plant, it will start burning it. That is, if your manure is not well cooked, you can only apply it somewhere here, like a distance. You plant, apply your manure here and when it is well cooked, you can now heap it the way we have heaped it here. So that is an, the main point when applying manure because some of you are planting are applying it directly to your plant when they are, it is still fresh and it is burning most of your plants and then it end up burning the the plant and you lose some of the plants so make sure that while applying it you give it a distance and you are asking whether it will mix well with the soil because you are watering it it will mix well with the soil while watering it so that is the st step one at this particular stage you need to add like, for this stage you can now add like 20 kgs because your plant is already four months and the roots has already established or come, came into contact or it is getting used into, to your soil. So that is the main point while applying manure. Even while transplanting, make sure you are not using a lot of manure because if you use a lot of manure again, they will, it will burn your, your roots. But at three, four, five, especially at four months, add it like 20 kgs. That is one bucket of manure. Make sure it is well cooked to avoid any loss of your plant. Again, continue using the organic vegetative foliar and the fungicide. We give it at an interval of seven or 14 days. At intervals of seven to 14 days, use the fungicide and vegetative foliar. The best, I have seen people asking me, what vegetative folia that I actually use. The vegetative folia or the folias that I use, we use them organically. And we use products that are readily available to everyone. Like for example, we use the wood ash. Wood ash, you just apply it at the bottom or at the roots of your plant. Wood ash actually contains calcium and potassium that will help your plant to grow. Also, we apply rabbit urine. Rabbit urine, in this case, it has two purposes. The first purpose, it is a fertilizer. That is what we refer to as a folia. And the other purpose is that it's a pesticide. So, it also contains potassium and phosphorus, which are very essential for your plant to grow. So, it therefore enhances it or it helps it to grow very well. Remember, the rabbit urine is organic. And also, for those who are doing aqua farming, we have the fish pond, or those who have the fish pond, the fish waste or the dirty water from the fish pond is also used, you just spray it. For the rabbit urine, you use 200 ml in 20 liters pump, the same way with the fish pond waste or the dirty water from the fish, it is used 200 ml in 20 liters pump. And with this one, it also contains nitrogen together with the, the rabbit urine and the fish pond waste, they contain nitrogen and potassium. To your, they, they help it, they boost in nitrogen and potassium and also phosphorus for your plant. So if you have those products, either you have the wood ash, you have the rabbit urine or the 
that water from the fish pond those are good for boosting it boosting the growth of your plant and also for the rabbit urine is also good for pesticide as a pesticide so those are some of the product we use and we also have companies which are having the ready product so if by any chance you are watching and you have a company that has organic product the ready ed product maybe the vegetative foliar the fungicide or pesticide you can talk to us also while spraying this this product remember that the organic product is not harmful you find that they only take seven ma seven days for them to lose the energy or lose the power so they are very good because that's why we encourage people to use the organic product because even when going to the market everybody wants something that is organic it is not harmful to your health so that is the main thing as to why we we use organic product to our plant so that even when it comes to market it is every, everybody is going for the organic product other than the other synthetic products also at this particular stage this is the best stage for you to tip tip means cutting your heads of your plant so that it can produce more branches like for these ones at the stage of four months or four months especially that is where you need to tip cutting this top here you just cut this one here and once you cut that way remember all the energy that were used for it to grow taller it will be used for these buds to produce branches here from where the buds were now the branches will start coming out and it can produce all this can produce the branches because you already limited it from growing more taller so these buds now will produce branches and you, you will find that it can produce branches at every particular bud or every leaf will produce a branch because you have just re reduced the energy that is actually using for it to grow tall. Also at this stage, it is the stage whereby you need to make sure that your plant is clean from the winds. Like mine's here, I just removed the weeds, especially at this area where my, I am expecting my plant to to be feeding or the, the roots to have reached. So make sure that it is not having a lot of weeds. If it has the weeds, weeds actually attract a lot of pests. So you'll be having a very difficult time for you to fight the pests and diseases that are brought by the weeds. Also they compete nutrients from the soil with your plant. So therefore you find that you have a lot of challenges and the challenges are brought by the weeds that are actually around your plant. Also, when you water them, the weeds are also taking advantage of the water. Other than your plant being fed alone by the water, you're finding that they are competing. The competition is so high with the, with the weeds. If you didn't, remember also, continue watering your plant either every week, like twice, if your place is not raining, every every time 20 liters. So that means 40 liters in a week if your place is very dry like here in Laikipia. But for those who are in highlands like in Nyeri and it is raining, there is no need for you to water it. But you can just give it 10 liters if it is not raining at that particular time. <laughs>
the reason as to why it is difficult for me to prune is because the vegetative foliar that I'm applying to my apples, it's also coming to my dragon fruit. Therefore, you find that they have a lot of branches and also I'm watering them so much than it is, they should be while watering my apples. So for those who want to intercrop apples with the dragon fruit, I advise you to plant them somewhere separate. Not like me, I'm doing one line and the other one is dragon fruit, the other one is apples. You need to do them at a separate place so that you can be able to do it without doing planting or doing dragon fruit as if it's apples because dragon fruit one thing is that it does not require a lot of water and also you don't have to induce a lot of vegetative hormones to it so that's why you are finding that i don't have the more fruits than i should be because i i intercropped them the way they should not be intercropped <laughs> The other thing you need to consider is planting the bird's feed. For us here we have planted the mulberry, that is what we are using as our fence. What it does is that mulberry produces very good fruits for the birds, they love the mulberry. So instead of them coming to eat my apples, they will go for the mulberries because birds love mulberry so much and therefore my apples will not be stabbed by the birds because I have already fenced with, the, with my mulberries. Also have these Christmas decors. This one works very well during sunny time because what, when the sun burns here at this particular shiny place, it will reflect back and therefore my, my bird will be burnt at the eyes and it will be disturbed. Hence it will run away from my farm because it is not safe for their eyes. The same way you are being disturbed by this shiny object when it's sunny or when the light shines on it, that's the same way my birds will be disturbed. You can also use the bird net. It's also another way for you to, to prevent your fruits from being disturbed by the birds. But for the monkeys, with those people who are complaining of the monkeys, you can also use the mulberry because they will come they, will, they eat the mulberry, you know you, those animals are coming to your farm to look for feeds. And once you plant the feeds at the fence, as your fence, they will be fed with the feeds you planted, that is the mulberry, as your fence. And then they will just run away or go well. They are already fed without disturbing your fruits. Also, for those who are being disturbed by the moles, you can plant the yellow bean. The yellow bean is actually poisonous to the, to the moles, so they will just, when the moles eat the, the roots of the yellow bean, they will just die. That's what we do for the areas which has the moles. You just plant the yellow bean at the bottom of your plant. Also remember beans roots, they actually boost nitrogen to, for, to your soil, so they are also good for you to plant at the bottom. Consider the the one that doesn't climb, the unclimbing yellow bean. Thank you very much for watching my today's video. Let's look forward for the next video as we talk about the third trimester. That is six, seven, nine months and perhaps ten months. This is Wonderful Heaven Farm and my name is Priscilla Nyairia.